comes from a development side, uh, what the new cadence does for us, but being able to deliver improvements more rapidly in actual regular fashion, it takes a lot of the administrative sort of bureaucratic pressure of trying to just fit that one last feature into the release before the deadline mm -hmm. because you know there is a new release coming just around the corner a few months down the road so you can basically focus on making the best release for for users with with the features that are ready at the moment and then do the same thing six months down the road again uh, instead of basically having to play favorites um, and for engineers it's also great to be able to deliver those things you know, every couple of months instead of having to wait a few years for a release to actually um, be generally available and then a few more years to be adopted by the various users. Because in the past with those big releases, what we saw was of course, you know, we would work a few years on, on JDK 7 and then it would come out and then people would see, oh, JDK 7 is out. Uh, I think I'll wait a bit because it has a lot of changes, right? Some of these changes may be well not something i read right now so i'm gonna wait and see if somebody else gets bitten by sharks in the pool right um and so it may take you know a year or two for it to actually get mainstream adoption and, and the same with eight which is i think our fastest adopter release mm -hmm. um nevertheless we, we still saw people you know carefully approach this major release simply because they wanted to make sure that there were no s surprises basically Right. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, a big release like, you know, 8 or, or 7 or, or 9 um, had 50 or in, in case of no, uh, 9, almost 90 features included. And so, of course, you know, if, if you want to be careful about adopting new releases, um, it's really something you want to, well, make sure that you really were prepared for adopting. Um, with a new cadence, though, because releases are coming out much faster, the the overall volume of changes per release is now much smaller so uh in in jdk 10 which was the first release on new cadence we had i think um 12 changes come in in the jdk 11 we had i think about 17 and jdk around eight so all together that comes out as roughly 12 changes per release and that's of course not quite an order of magnitude less than 90 but it's almost in the ballpark, right? And, and so what we've seen was that um, the projects, the open source projects and libraries we work together with through the Open JDK Quality Outreach, where we um, regularly um, you know, get feedback and, and testing from a huge community of more than 100 popular libraries and projects, that those projects that have been able to follow um, the space and were able to test and make sure they're their code works well on JDK 10, we're able to do the same for 11 really quickly as well because simply the, you know, the, the risk profile, so to say, from this change was very different than, say, from going from 8 to 9 uh, because there was a lot less to be afraid of, so right. to say. And similarly, we're seeing with 12 already that some of these projects have, I mean, 12 was just released like three weeks ago, have been now um, fully tested on 12 are declaring that they're ready for 12. And I, th I think that's really great, you know, pace in, in the community that we didn't really have a couple of years ago when we had these big releases and everybody was sort of waiting for when they would come out. And they may get delayed because the feature took a bit longer or something. So there was uncertainty around that aspect. With this new cadence, there is a lot more certainty around when we're going to ship something and you can adjust to it, you can plan ahead. And in fact, now that 12 is out, we're already working on 13 mm -hmm. and um, as we go out to the community um, and tell people about the good things in 12 we also make sure that they know they can actually already start testing their code against JDK 13 because we have been publishing early access builds of JDK 13 based on a code we developed in Open JDK for the past you know two months and we'll continue to do so up until it's released six months from now roughly and that means that as you know, as a developer, uh, you can actually make sure that your code stays um, fresh, mm -hmm. and uh, you can basically detect any sort of regressions or other problems well ahead of time. Report it to us, and then we can look into it and hopefully fix it, of course. Um, 
but it also means that by, for example, using Docker, where we have collaborated with a Docker team to provide um, Open JDK images straight from Oracle as part of the the, the Open JDK image on, on Docker, you can basically Docker pull with the tag uh, 13 Oracle and get every week or so the latest EA build, put in your CI system, and that way be really well prepared for when 13 ships to be able to say, yep, we're, we're good, we can move on. Mm -hmm. And that's also another change that's been very beneficial, I think, overall, where we're just starting to see the impact of in the community. Mm -hmm. So w when there are like a big, there are big innovations like uh, Valhalla, for example, project. So how d how is that integrated into like all those um, those releases, uh, like uh, in twelve or in? Uh, right. So how does it work uh, yes, with this new cadence? E even even with a new cadence, we still want to deliver you know even big features. Right. Um, big features tend to take time, and in the jet process that we use to plan our features. We have like a duration um, field where you can indicate that your jet may take a little bit of time, a little bit longer, or a lot of time, and that's okay. But of course, this new cadence has an interesting effect on, on developers of new features because um, it allows you to actually think of your you know big feature as a as a set of building blocks, and then. Um, you can basically try to think about it as, as a sequence of steps you want to go through and figure out which of these steps you could probably try to deliver a bit sooner mm -hmm. to get the feedback from you know early access uh, build users or through, through a new feature we have now through preview features in JDK itself, get it as part of the, um, JDK like we have for JDK 12 now with uh, sweet expressions and that way um, use that to refine your design of the larger feature based on the feedback you receive on the individual steps without having to commit to it in its current form being, you know, baked forever. Uh, and we've done this very successfully, for example, with the HTTP2 client, um, where we have re-architected um, the way HTTP communication works um, in JDK core libraries between, you know, JDK 8 and JDK 11 where we started out with a new HTTP library being a preview feature. So it was in its own separate you know, namespace, basically. And it was clear that you could use it, but you shouldn't rely on the API staying the same, right? It was a preview feature, after all. And um, once we had implementation in 9, we approached various parties building, for example, HTTP servers, uh, HTTP clients to try out the APIs and we got a lot of great feedback from people who work on, you know, Jetty, Netty, all these wonderful frameworks that many Java developers use in trying those APIs. And we use that feedback to continuously over the period of JDK 10 and JDK 11 refine this API. So that in 11 we had a really good API in the platform for, for everybody basically. Thanks to this, you know, approach of iteratively improving uh, such a feature through, through the preview, preview model. And from this experience, we've extended this to also cover both the language and the VM itself, um, and to be able to preview you know, language and VM features and approach them in the same way so that larger features can, can also benefit from this iterative feedback cycle with a broader community. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, something to look forward to. I mean, even you know, Jigsaw or Big Feature in 9 probably could have been you know, delivered piece right. more piecewise had we had this model back then, but we didn't, mm -hmm. so you know. And it's it's l it's more collaborative and less of a surprise also for for developers at the end to uh, uh, yes I think yeah. a, a lot of developers um, you know work on the JDK and that's mm -hmm. great thing to do to work on and we're hiring of course but um, a lot of developers also you know um, regard JDK as as their s a Swiss Army knife as as a great tool to have in the back pocket but they don't necessarily spend so much time. Uh, looking up, you know, the latest trends in Swiss Army knife making. They just, you know, get the best and latest life when they need one. And so, being able to deliver those features piece by piece with developers also give us a much broader base to, you know, get feedback on and get the the validation of the designs mm -hmm. that we we pursue um, by not just the people who produce JDKs or who produce IDEs for JDKs, which is also a great set of, you know. Um, collaborators who don't directly work on a code, 
but nevertheless a crucial in our ecosystem to support developers working with the latest releases. Because of course, as developers, you want to be able to use switch expressions the day 12 comes out, right? You want to be able to use the, the module system the day it comes out. You don't want to wait like another two years. Right. As, as used to be the case when generics came out 10 years ago. So, you know, so we made a lot of progress. Right. <laughs> so if people, so what's the best place for people to go to, to find out about new projects, about uh, like, um, um, what's the process that you suggest? Uh, where is the place that uh, they can go online to find out about it? So the, the best place for new features that are being uh, proposed is to go to the OpenJDK website, openjdk.java.net, mm -hmm. uh, and to go to the JEPS um, uh, page within it, which lists all the different enhancement proposals that are being worked on, proposed for discussion, or even withdrawn or rejected. Of course, if it turns out an idea isn't that great after all, or may not be the right time for it, or something like that. For example, if you want to add a go-to keyword right now, maybe not right now, we have other things to do. Um, and then, of course, um, for, for the individual projects, um, all of them have mailing lists, have their own communication channels that they provide insight into what's being planned, how they're being developed, so that you can actually, um, and I think that also makes Java quite unique, have a very deep level of insight into the actual you know, planning and development uh, as, as features, but also as bug fixes are developed. And you can therefore, you know, adjust your expectations accordingly, uh, in line with what's actually happening, and not have you don't have to trust so much that somebody else somewhere will, you know, tell you what it's like. You can look it up for yourself. And then we also have a very active uh, Twitter account uh, at OpenJDK, where we regularly uh, make our uh, users aware of uh, new builds, new features, new discussions that are worth following and. Uh, uh, co participating in, we do regular surveys um, in different projects like like Amber, where we do language features uh, to evaluate um, a broader developer feedback on, you know, semantic or syntax ideas. Mm -hmm. um, because of course, um, even though you know programming is is a very technical uh, area, I think, well, as far as I remember, our product manager now. So what do I know, right? But um, it's there's still you know taste still matters a lot, and and how familiar things are. So we do want to get this you know feedback to service, for example. Um, so we do have a number of different ways to reach out to, to, to our audiences. And last but not least, um, one thing we have started doing for the past couple of years has been to establish um, a regular set of meetings, the the Open JDK Committer Workshop. Mm -hmm. Uh, which we had last year in, in Santa Clara in the summer, this year in Brussels during winter, and fortunately we'll have again in Santa Clara in the summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's always a great opportunity to learn about what's going with the various projects, and of course to you know to get a taste of this really great, really welcoming community that goes uh, from Oracle, you know, across the Java ecosystem. Yep. Um, and you know, I look forward to seeing you there. Hopefully. So OpenJDK, at OpenJDK on Twitter. I always retweet from the at Java as well, all thank your you posts, much. because uh, that's important that they know where to find the information. So thank you so much, Dalibor. Really appreciate your time and um, your time to talk to us. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>